Hey y'all, it's me, Kimberly Clark, and welcome to this episode of Listen Up. Listen, listen, listen. Up, up, up. Now, this is a video that I filmed a while ago with my dear drag sister here in New Orleans, Miss Tara Cards. The other videos in this series are kind of more like little lectures, uh, kind of essays that I wrote about the different topics. For this one, I decided that since so many of you are interested in not only drag as just like an art form, but also how it relates to gender, and a lot of you identify as cis women, I thought it would be interesting to kind of have a conversation about drag with a cis woman that does drag as a feminine presenting character. If you are interested in seeing more of this series, I'll link my Listen Up series playlist in the description box down below. Uh, and if you're curious as to where the hell I've been for the past year, please check out my update video, which I will also link down below. But without further ado, please enjoy this episode of Listen Up, all about drag. I would like to please welcome to Kimberly Clark Studios, my lovely drag sister here in New Orleans, Miss Tara Cards. <laughs> you have to walk around the back. I know I did. So you're a drag queen, but before we mm -hmm. define what drag is, you're also a hyper queen. Yeah. What is that? Um. So there are so many terms that are bouncing around to define what cisgendered women are doing in the drag community. And I find bio queen is a little weird and rigid and yeah. and also really just focused on biology and gender too much. And it also sounds like a cleaning product. <laughs> <laughs> yes. With this new extra awesome bio queen. <laughs> you can clean all your toilets. Yep, yeah, yeah. Spotless. And I stole that from Monique, who is a legendary female drag artist mm -hmm. in San Francisco, and she's unreal. So the difference, <laughs> one of the differences between us, because we're very different people, is that in our non-drag existence, mm -hmm. you live your life as a cis woman, mm -hmm. and I live my life as a cis man. But we both are doing drag as feminine characters mm -hmm. of some capacity. Yeah. For me, when I was coming up with my drag persona and Tara, she didn't present to me as like, I am a woman. Like yeah. thinking about approaching drag as a as a performance style and also just it's so much more. It's kind of like a, this incredible lotus that is slowly yeah. opening all of these petals of I'm learning all the time and I think that's important just as a human. This is a big question. Mm -hmm. How do you define drag? Ugh. Defining something that seems like it should be undefinable. I right. mean, that's kind of the the freedom of this expression of art in general. I don't think that it should have confines or parameters that you have to operate within, but that's a really safe answer. Yeah, maybe this is a less intense question is like is there a difference between drag and not drag for you because you are not always in drag oh yeah so what's the what's the difference um you know it's interesting because you know like in you were speaking about this in your your video about gender mm -hmm. and identity and I think that yes there is a lot of performance that happens when you're you know trying to present and especially as a woman I think that there's a lot of pressure to like be like I'm so pretty and perfect and like oh what I just woke up like looking so good and mm -hmm. I don't have a zit or I, I look like flawless and but like the deeper the work that you're doing on stage and exploring the human psyche and like there is so much to it I mean do the, the way I approach performance it's not just about what I'm presenting like my look you know yeah. it's how can I sell this 
like moment or this ridiculous notion or like I'm gonna take this thing that everybody does and I'm gonna turn it upside down and twist it and gut it mm -hmm. and then roll around in the guts <laughs> and then be like what you know <laughs> drag gives you license to really explore topics that may be taboo or seem off limits and people like react so differently to it like you can do things and say things in drag in that character because you're removing the mm. responsibility of self mm -hmm. i think you're stepping away from you mm -hmm. and being like oh well i can say it because i'm over here being you know this Another character person. this yeah. isn't me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And so I think that there is, I don't know, there's this space that is given to drag artists and people performing that you can, like, have a conversation with somebody that would be, like, maybe a little bit more off, mm -hmm. you know, put off by you. Like, yeah. if you're not in face and in character and creating this, like, atmosphere of, like, well, I'm, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. We can talk about anything. It's safe because I'm really a character, maybe not like this person that has baggage or a history or something going on that would make it more inaccessible. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like there is an importance of identifying the different type of performance that drag is than gender. Absolutely. Because, like, gender, I mean, if, uh, please watch my video on gender where I talk about it's gender genius. performativity, but it's basically like, you know, we all put on something or do something active to represent who we are mm -hmm. in the world. But it sounds like drag is a performance that is meant to be, people are meant to be aware of the performance. Mm -hmm. Whereas our gender, it's a performance that we're not trying to, uh, it's not something overt. Like we're not yeah. saying, I'm performing gender, you're just uh, performing it. But drag, like the person watching you should know you're performing. Yeah. Like, it's not drag if they don't know you're performing, yeah. maybe. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, because I was trying to figure out how drag performance is different from gender performance. And I think it's about that awareness. Mm -hmm. When you're a drag queen on stage, everyone knows you're a drag queen on stage. Right. And if you're a drag queen in the club, everyone knows you're a drag queen in the club. And there's no better way to test that than to do a gig in drag at a bar and then take off your face and walk around the bar and see how differently people treat you. It's crazy. It's or have nourishing. somebody be like, what's your boy name? <laughs> <laughs> Do people think you're a, a cis man in drag? Sometimes. <laughs> and it's really, I, I honestly think it's a compliment because it's like, I have elevated whatever I'm doing outside of the realm of like, oh, that's clearly a woman. Right. Clearly, you know? So I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> what brought you to drag? Like, have you always kind of... I've always... I mean, I can't say always because I grew up in fucking rural Montana. <laughs> so it's not like drag was everywhere. Everyone's a drag queen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really, my exposure began in college. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a rural Montana town and then proceeded to go to college in a rural, <laughs> well, it was like more of a city, mm -hmm. city. <laughs> in my college town of Missoula, mm -hmm. Montana, I went to a gay bar that was an American veterans hall during the day. And then at 6 PM, I think they yes. switched it over to a gay bar oh my God. and it was called Amvets. And it was this amazing dungeon like you had to go down like these stone steps and there was a like kind of like one of those round doors <laughs> and you open it and it was like literally a cave it was amazing but it smelled like like well i would say like 50 years of cigarette smoke <laughs> and like you would know going in you're like okay i'm gonna smell like really gross later mm -hmm. <laughs> But it was amazing! <laughs> I saw people dressing outside of their assigned genders there for the first time. Mm -hmm. Tawny was the, <laughs> the woman that I like, you know, was really into. Oh. She, her looks, <laughs> her, her outfits were so interesting. Wait, oh my god, describe just like one Tawny look. Like, um, that stood out very... <laughs> Don't take offense to this. Uncombed wigs. 
I, yes, that's, like, I but understand like, that aesthetic choice. Maybe it looked like it had been run over by a car. <laughs> Some really, like, interesting sh- smocks. I've never, like, actually seen anyone wear a smock. But she fucking rocked a smock rocker. <laughs> yeah, I was into her look. So this was, this was before you, you personally started doing drag. So Oh, way before. So then when when did you start doing drag and how did that begin? Well, I started doing drag a year and a half ago. I, I'm a I newbie. Hate, I hate you. Like, that's <laughs> not, it's not, it's just not fair. It's not fair that you're this good. And you've oh been my doing drag god, for a year and a half. you're so sweet. Uh, I hate you. Like, honestly, everything that I was doing in my life that I was like, okay, I'm a multi-potentialite, I don't have one yep. job, and I always would kick myself for that, and I would just be like, I'm such an asshole, right, yeah. I can't commit to a profession, and then I realized, like, everything that I'm doing is lending itself so perfectly to drag! It was like, all of these little things, these threads of, like... I was like, I'm gonna make all these costumes and I'm gonna make headpieces and I'm gonna style wigs and I'm gonna do makeup and all yeah. it, and like my performance background and like yeah. what I, like just all the things that I was like, oh, I'm never going to do anything successfully. One thing channeled perfectly into drag. Yeah. As, as drag becomes more popular, I feel like it, as with any media, like the more popular it gets, people kind of lose some of the nuance of it mm-hmm. and they think it's this one easy oh my thing God, and it's so not easy yeah it's like doing a full two months of like prep for a play mm-hmm. in a, a couple of days or like a week <laughs> and then doing it again like mm-hmm. immediately mm-hmm. it's yeah. unreal you know oh my god i love as i'm a singer and so are you mm-hmm. and honestly i could sing background and harmonies for the rest of my life and be mm-hmm. completely okay. And so <laughs> lip syncing is really awesome because I feel like I'm them but not them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tara is one of the my favorite lip syncers, one of the best lip syncers. And I think it is because you are a singer. I oh, think that singers helps. make for the best lip syncers because like we know what it took to like make yeah. that sound and so we can play with it and comment on it in like mm-hmm. a whole new way, which is super fun. Yeah. You could totally tell like when drag queens lip sync, like if they can sing or not. Oh totally. it's amazing. I agree. It's I so absolutely interesting. agree. It's just a real thing. And I when I'm learning a song, I'll sing because mm-hmm. it. <laughs> it's the Muslim memory of like the kinesthetic learning of okay I know how to like try to I'm not gonna like hit some of those Adele style notes or anything but like going into that and just being able to sing it physically like I translate it a little bit more when I'm lip syncing so I love that yeah yeah it is like a translation Mm -hmm. all of it is a kind of translation we're translating an idea of a person or someone that we have in our head like onto our faces for the Mm -hmm. rest of the world okay so I'm gonna ask some serious questions or they're not serious they're just really tricky and hard to answer up the rosé for this what is your response to those who think or would say that drag is disrespectful to women or it doesn't fit into feminism because we're basically like making fun of women? I mean, there's definitely numbers that I've been like, uh, you went too far. <laughs> you know, there's definitely going to be moments I don't think that you should take one instance and then decide that all of drag is right is sexist or... I mean, there's a lot of gay male misogyny that exists. Oh, definitely. I'm not going to deny that. Yes. I think there is definitely some overlap with that. So there's a lot of, a lot of drag queens are cis gay men Mm -hmm. and a lot of cis gay men can be misogynistic. Mm -hmm. So there is a, there is some instances where Mm -hmm. some of these people are misogynistic, but I mean, we both are feminists and still love hyper femininity. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's maybe a tricky thing, yeah. too. Cause... Well, and I think that in order to be a feminist, you have to really embrace all... All women. All women. All and kinds of women, yes. every way in which they display their femininity or how they live their lives. And um, for me, specifically, like, why I feel like drag translates is because when I was growing up, I never associated myself with gender. Like, I never was like, I am a girl. Mm -hmm. I am girl. Like, never. I was what they call a tomboy, which I would love to read 
the horrible definition Bring of it. tomboy. It's an energetic, sometimes boisterous girl whose behavior and pursuits, especially in games and sports, are considered more typical of boys than girls. You are a girl. You're supposed to be seemingly dead. Dead inside and on the outside. Right, 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 right. Quiet. <laughs> so I was tomboy. Mm -hmm. So when I was in college, I did this panel for the Lambda Alliance for my college. Uh -huh. We went to the local high schools and it was, guess who's gay, straight, or bi? Like a, like a quiz? They, the kids would ask us questions, and then they would guess after we got off stage. Oh my god, that's we were so intense. Gay, straight, or bi, and of course everyone thought I was a lesbian because, and I quote, I was really funny and loud. This is real. okay, this is very interesting to me because okay. now I'm thinking about, there's always been a problem with defining gender. And so there seems to be this thing of like criticizing anyone for misrepresenting a gender mm -hmm. seems wrong. So, it, or not wrong, it just seems there's no basis. There's not a real basis. So like femininity is not necessarily something that only women can have, just in the same way that being boisterous, energetic, and loud <laughs> is not something that only men can have. Yeah. So in that sense, it's almost like, I mean, Charles Bush says it in a really great way where he says, I don't want to be a woman, I want to be an actress. And I think that's a really that's great... Amazing. That's amazing. Because it's like, we're not, we're not trying to be real in any way. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's this very... It is, it's true. I don't think it is about, like, this is the, this is an authentic woman. <laughs> Can you talk about how doing drag has helped you in your non-drag life? Oh, yeah. You know, it's just, it's given me an outlet I didn't have before, and it also has given me an opportunity to connect with people in a way that I didn't feel personally was accessible. And, like, just having those moments on stage where I allow myself to be larger than life or really just getting all of the goody, the joy mm -hmm. out of that performance and how I'm making people feel and even learning that like if my number doesn't thrill, I'm okay. Oh. You know? And that's been a really good crossover lesson that I'm like, okay, well I didn't, you know, slay this evening, but I'm okay. It's amazing for me to hear as like and I think this is what's really going to be amazing about this video, hopefully, is that for me, I've always felt like drag is like different from my life. Like I'm a different person, I put on a different person. And I think it's, I think most people, and myself included at times, like in the past, have thought that like, oh, but you are not, you're not doing a different person, you're just doing a more feminine person but in reality, we're both creating totally different people. Oh my god, this is not me at all. <laughs> like that's, I think that's, a lot of people look at hyper queens and they're like, oh, they just put on a little extra makeup and yeah. so now they're a drag queen. It's like, you're doing the exact same thing, which is creating a totally new identity. Mm -hmm. And that affords you to learn about your other identity so much because yeah. you're failing in this very safe space. It speaks to performance in this way. Yeah. I, feel like I wrote down performance so many times because I was like, I feel like that's such a defining thing about drag. It's huge. I personally, you know, and this is, this is coming from someone that's not, I don't have tons of drag experience, but the, the performance informed everything else. It was yeah. like the performance first, and that was like the kind of catalyst for this like, oh, this is who I am. Oh, okay, it's starting to like come clearer, it's clearer. But the performance is really what informed my identity more than anything. What uh, advice would you have for cis women who have maybe wear makeup or maybe don't wear makeup but have never tried drag before? <laughs> well, I would say that if you want to put on drag makeup for fun, be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> to give up all of your time uh, <laughs> and your money. <laughs> but if you're a cis woman looking to become 
a drag artist or whatever, I think that the most important thing is to approach it with reverence, uh, respect, and, and also respect yourself. Get to know your community and get to know the history of drag. <laughs> That's critical. And, um, you know, just really work on developing self-love you know that's like the big like be good yeah. be a good person yeah and you'll find your drag persona in there <laughs> she's in there or he is in there or <laughs> they are in there they're in there thank you for being here and thank you for for openly discussing your journey and your experience. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, I think we've, I hope we've answered all your questions about drag. If you don't think we have, please yeah. write your questions and thoughts in the comments down below. Let us know what else you think we can discuss. Maybe we'll have you back and we'll talk yeah. even more. And please find Tara on all of her social medias, which will be floating magically here. Go support amazing local queens wherever you are. There's probably mm -hmm. an awesome, amazing drag queen that's just starting out that needs some support from amazing, lovely fans like you. Go find them. Give them a dollar. Or five. Or all of your dollars. Or all of your dollars. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And thank you for uh, listening. This has been Tara Cards and Kimberly Clark. And this is Listen Up. Thanks y'all so much for watching. I am kind of more interested in this type of format for this series moving forward. Uh, I have some other videos about consumerism that I'm planning on filming that are more kind of a uh, like manifesto type situation. Again, check out my update video if you want more info on that. But I think if I do continue this series, I'm going to actually be interviewing some people. So it's more of a conversation. I just feel like that's kind of where I want this kind of work to go, the direction that I want it to move. And uh, I think that that's kind of just what, what's gonna happen. So please stay tuned for some upcoming videos in this series that are more 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 like interviews. As always, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please check out my Patreon if you really want to support me and the work that I do on this channel. I recently made some big changes to the way that my Patreon is set up, uh, so it's a lot easier for you to participate and help support me. Thanks so much to everyone that is already a patron of mine on Patreon. I could not make these videos without you, and I thank you so much for your support and love. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. I'm Kimberly Clark. Bye. Bye. I can't do it with the straight face. When I'm doing it's it by right, myself in a time. room, it's so not <clears throat> as ridiculous as yeah, it is it's now. It's funny, I love it. I'm Kimberly Clark. And I'm Tara Cards. Bye. Bye.